Hello, y'all. <laughs> so this video started out one way. I had an idea to show some different products for journals to, to use in your journal to add art. People have been asking me questions about supplies, especially budget supplies. And although this series on supplies isn't just about budget supplies, it's about supplies in general. Nobody should ever make you feel like you should have to apologize for whatever supplies you're using, whether they're artist grade watercolors or budget watercolors or somewhere in the middle. It doesn't really matter what supplies you're using. I will say, however, as a disclaimer, most of the things that I've read, if you are really interested in improving your art, you're going to be able to tell a big difference between artist grade watercolors and budget watercolors. Some people go so far as to tell as to say that some people say on the one hand you should use student grade watercolors to learn with how to the techniques of watercolor whereas other people say that there's such a big difference between the two that you should just start with artist grade because you'll see a big difference. Other people disagree. Other people say it's all about the paper. Now I took some of the supplies that I did and I realized while I was editing the video that they are different colors some of them so I redid and used watercolor paper and I used the same pretty much I uh, used ultramarine blue now the only difference was that I didn't have ultramarine blue in Jane Davenport or in the Schmincke I had French ultramarine blue in the Schmincke or Schmincke and I had what was called blueberry, which is very, very, very close to being ultramarine blue. So you're going to see in the video where I show you the picture at, right after I'm going to talk here. And then at the very end of the video, you're going to see the differences. And I did three coats. One coat, two coats, three coats. And I did the schminka up top. I had an extra piece of watercolor paper and... I can see the difference when I look at them I can see the difference here's my thing if I were on a budget if I, I'm trying to stay in front of the light if I were on a budget and I were just learning how to do art just wanting to add doodles and drawings and stuff to my journal Hobonichi, Fobonichi, Omni Journal, Bullet Journal Whatever kind of journal you have and you want to add art to your pages, I can tell the difference between the artist grade and the budget. I can tell a big difference. Big, big difference. If you get that palette from artist, the Artist Loft palette with the round circles, it has the really pretty colors. It looks beautiful. If you use that and you've never used any other kind of watercolor, you're not going to know. Because those, you're going to be like, what? Everybody's going ooh, ah over this. They're chalky. They're chalky. They're very chalky. And they come off of your page. So if I were, and I said this later in the video, but to be honest, to be completely honest, full disclosure, if I were starting out now and I wanted advice from somebody, what kind of advice would I want from my future self? So this is my future self telling my past self, this is what you ought to do. I would have started out with either the Windsor Newton Travel Kit instead of the, the Artist Loft or the Koi. I would have started out with Windsor Newton Common, which are student grade watercolors. They didn't have Jane Davenport when I was first starting out. I think they had the Primas, but I didn't know anything about the Primas. The Primas are the Jane Davenports. From the Jane Davenports, I went to Artist Grade because I think that the Primas and the Jane Davenports, although they say they're artist grade, they're, to me, I can tell the difference between them and the artist grade watercolors. So to me, they're in the middle. They have bold, vibrant colors. They're very pigmented, but I don't know enough about them to say they are or they aren't artist grade. I know what I've heard, and I've heard from professionals, and I've heard from where I've done research that they're, they're said to be artist grade. But there are different levels, there are different levels of artist grade. So to me, they're not quite up with the Schmincke and the Daniel Smith. Now, when I look at the Schmincke and the Daniel Smith, I can see a difference. And they're both, they're both artist grade, but they are, are different how they go on the paper, how you they're different. 
all the different brands of watercolor are different. People have different preferences. I can't afford to try every brand out there, and I can't afford to get all the colors. But what I can afford to do is try some every now and again. When I have a little bit of extra money, I get a half pan from Artistic Cat of certain colors that I'm interested in. I have one of these from Daniel Smith. And I'll look up some of the colors that I'm interested in. Um, I ask other people who have a lot more experience with artist grade watercolors questions. I watch videos. What I do for my sketchbooks and for my prettier, fancier uh, pages in my journal are different than what I do with regular pages in my journal. But that's me. And everybody's different. But if I were telling my, if my future self was telling my past self what to do, that would be what I do. I'd go to Michael's or I'd go on Amazon or I'd go on eBay or I'd go on JetPens or Jerry's Artorama or Jackson's or Dick Blick's or somewhere and I'd order maybe some Windsor Newton Cotman watercolor brushes. Um, you could get silver black velvet brushes depending on your budget. You could get synthetic sable brushes or synthetic squirrel brushes. I'd get a set of brushes from Walmart or from Amazon as long as they're or Michael's. Uh, I'd be careful about Walmart and Michael's though because some of their synthetic brushes for watercolor, sometimes those pieces of the hair come out and they'll get on your work. I tried those. That was my first bad experience. So now I look up reviews, which is one of the reasons why I like getting things from Amazon so much is because there are reviews. So just a disclaimer. This video is about the if there is there enough of a difference if all you are interested in is having something to put some watercolor down in your journal because not everybody wants to go to artist grade watercolors. Not everybody can afford artist grade watercolors. I couldn't have afforded the Jane Davenport watercolors at the time that I was getting them if I had not had a coupon. I gave my son a coupon. I had a coupon, I bought a bin, I bought a tin, he bought a tin, so that I could afford to get them. And that's what I did. That was the only way I could afford them at the time. Um, when I got artist grade watercolors and every time I, I get a little bit more and a little bit more, it's because I've saved some money or it's a birthday or a holiday. I got both Schmincke palettes for different holidays. Windsor and Newton Cotman I got when I was learning. I got one of them with a coupon and I got one of them with Amazon affiliate money. The travel palette I got from Michaels with a coupon. The bigger 48 count thing I got from Amazon with some affiliate money. That's how I did things. Everybody's different. But so many people have asked some of these questions that I think it's really important to one, say, hey, first of all, I'm not a professional. Second of all, I'm a work in progress, too. I'm learning, and I'm learning as I go, and I'm learning through trial and error. But if I were doing this all over again, and you're going to hear me say this quite a few times in this video, if I were doing this all over again, some of the things I do, depending on where I live, depending on what I wanted to do with the supplies, because if you're interested in lettering, then by all means, I'd get the Tombows. I'd save up and get a bright, get the Tombows. I use a coupon at Michael's, get the Tombos if they have them, or I wait and get them on Amazon when they go on sale, or from somewhere else if you have a coupon, or if you can get a little, if you have a little extra money, I get the Tombos because you can use those for lettering and you can use them to add watercolor to your pages. If I were starting out and I were interested in adding watercolor to my journal pages and I wanted to start learning how to get better at doing watercolor itself and maybe becoming an artist, you know, improving my artistic skills so that I could do urban sketching or plain air sketching, you know, doing that kind of thing, I'd start with the Windsor Newton um, because you can get more palettes. Um, you can get half pans. Some, you can get order them separately from certain places. You can get a bigger tin of them. But if you're interested in improving your watercolor skills for your journal pages and you want pretty colors, I'd get Jane Davenport or I'd get Prima. And I haven't used the Prima, but I've done a lot of research and people seem to really like them and they're supposed to be artist grade. So I've heard the same thing about the Primas that I've heard about the Jane Davenports. They're very bold, very vibrant, very pretty colors. Um, and they are really good, but from from what I hear, the same thing. They're not 
at the level that M. Graham or Schmincke or Daniel Smith are at. So it just depends. And people have certain preferences. Like some people don't like Daniel Smith and they like Schmincke. Some people like Schmincke and they don't like Daniel Smith. And back and forth, you know. I mean, I think I said that the same thing. But you know what I mean. So I'm going to go and I'm going to let you see the video because I really wanted to show y'all Hello, it's Burgess Taylor, and I thought we'd talk about some more of the supplies on a budget. So I have Ultramarine Blue and the Windsor Newton Cotman and Ultramarine Blue and the Daniel Smith. One is artist grade, one is student grade, and we'll use the blueberry color from Jane Davenport's line. I wanted to kind of, I took some blues, some different shades of blues to kind of show you and I have the acetate paper right here on top of my desk Let's see if I can get a piece of white paper there we go okay so now and what I'm going to do is I've done some shapes now I can do shades in the middle but I wanted to kind of fill in things here uh, I'm going to do some journaling here but for this I thought I do what I normally do I do um, this is the moon phase this is the weather and like I said I have things so I'm going to show you what it would be like versus the budget supply versus the more expensive supply and we're going to go down the line with the different things because I tried to find colors that were comparable I have these which are all sort of a turquoise now they're different shades this is more of a green turquoise these two whereas these are more of a blue turquoise but it gives you close enough and then these are two blues um, for us to have an idea of what we're talking about the colors aren't exact I don't have exact shades but this is close enough for what, what my purpose is, which is to show you the difference. So, I'm going to wet my brush. And um, we're going to start with the ultramarine blue. So we'll start with the Daniel Smith. And we'll put that here. Since I have Jane Davenport's, I'll put Jane Davenport's in the middle. And then we're going to do the, because that's an in the middle range. It's supposed to be artist grade, but it's not quite. So, this is the Windsor Newton. Then we're going to do the Jane Davenport's in the middle. And her colors are very vibrant. Okay. So I have student grade, artist grade in the middle. All right. So for here, student grade, I mean, budget would be the Crayola Super Tips. Like I said, the colors aren't 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 going to be matchy matchy. Let's see if I have a better blue of this. It's a darker blue, but it'll work. 
for my purposes anyway. to that blue but it gives you an idea all right so now we're going to do the same with the teal colors going to use four for this one so I'm going to actually do these this way all right so this would be considered budget these would actually be considered budget these are the side ones and the same thing that we have right here because these are all sort of a teal kind of color since the Crayola is a brush a marker and this is more of a marker we're gonna do this one right here and we'll do the zig right here so you get a pretty good idea okay now let's do the zig as soon as you touch it with water going to do the Kiritake, the Zig. I said the Zig earlier. That's That was the Tombow. Okay, so I've slid that over a little bit. And now I'm going to show you what what you can do here if you're actually going to mark it on the page. So we'll get a yellow, grays. And a gray. Okay. So pretty good to uh, get a pretty good idea. I did the gray is because it's been foggy. They said there was fog here. So I usually do gray clouds when it's foggy. All right. So now we have that and I don't need that much water there. Okay. So now we're going to do the I don't have a gray tombow. But I have a gray side, with, so we'll do that one. It's a little bit darker gray, though. But that's okay. Thank you. 
to that because it's still on there and I want it to be light. All right. So let's move in a little closer. For the purposes of a journal, with the markers, <laughs> I can see a significant difference here. This color is different, but it's very in line, it has some of these same color bases. With the watercolors, I can tell that the Jane Davenport has got, it, it's much more bold. Um, Whereas Daniel Smith, you can see more of the pigment in the Daniel Smith. But if you are talking about pages in your journal, and you're not talking about a sketchbook and art, but you're talking about journal pages, I think budget supplies are definitely a win for the money. Now, for my sketchbook and stuff, I mean, to be honest, um, I use a lot of the art supply stuff in my sketchbook I don't very often use the budget supplies but if I had to I can tell you right here based on what we're looking at you know for for the money if you are looking at budget construct I highly suggest you know if you're if you're if you're looking at budget you can see how much lighter the Crayola was but if you're talking about for your journal or your planner, you know, or your bullet journal, Crayola Super Tips are wonderful to do like this, to do watercolor in a Hobonichi or your bullet journal or your daily journal, a Fobonichi, Crayola Super Tips, Tombows, these, excellent way to do watercolor. The Windsor Newton Cotman set, which is this blue right here. Excellent. This came right here. That came out of there. If you want bold colors, you want bold, vibrant watercolor for your journal pages, your Fobonichi, your Hobonichi, your bullet journal, Jane Davenport. She has some beautiful colors. This is the neutral line. This is the I think these are the brights. I don't have the other one. She has another another one. I don't have it. But aren't these gorgeous? These are gorgeous. And I still actually use these in my journal. So, as far... I'm not going to tell anybody what to do. <laughs> but, but if I were starting over and I wanted advice about what to get, I'd get a set of Crayola Super Tips. I'd get a set of these. set of these.
So Crayola Super Tips, these, you can get Tombow markers or Crayola Super Tips. If, to be honest, if Tombow markers are a lot more expensive, we're talking budget, budget. We're talking budget. Instead of Zig Clean Clears, I get these and Crayola Super Tips. Either the Windsor Newton Cotman set or like Prima's or Jane Davenport's. If you're wanting, you could get this, which is the basic one. Get this, which is bright and colorful. And your set, um, honestly, you can get water brushes to use with these. If I were doing it all over again, I'd get I'd get these in the big pack with all the the colors. I think it's a 24 pack or something. I get this in like the 24 pack, so the colors are pretty close. And I get Windsor Newton. I get this exact thing right here. Um, I changed out the white for. I think this is Payne's Gray, and you can buy individual ones, the ones are Newton Cotman's. But if you don't want ones are Newton Cotman and you want the colors, if you buy these with coupons from Michaels, you have all of these, you have a lot of the same colors, only better um, because you have more to choose from <laughs> with these or the Primas. I mean, they don't have the basic green in here but they have two different shades of green. They have this beautiful sort of turquoise color and then a darker sort of turquoise, tur a darker turquoise, um, reds and yellows. This one has reds and yellows and the, um, and the neutral has a yellow and red and it has an orange. This also has a more neutral blue and then it, this one has this really beautiful it says ink it's like an I don't know it's like an indigo blue it's like a very dark indigo blue but there are be beautiful brilliant shades in these two so if I were starting all over I would get if I want color I get these for water brushes um, watercolor brushes. I get these for markers, the Crayola Super Tips. Get the Jane Davenport's. I like Tombow markers because they also work well as watercolor. And if you get like the brights, they have several dip the pastels. You could actually use these as watercolor. Um, so you could get these instead of these two. So budget wise, you could actually get these and you wouldn't have to get these, both of these. Um, but the Tombows can be a bit expensive and these aren't really that expensive and you can use the Tombows as watercolor just like we did here I showed you. So <clears throat> I also like this and this can be used for brush lettering for watercoloring all kinds of things watercolors can be so that's really up to you for this page I'm going to Take this. have a watercolor background to write over. I'll let it dry and you could put when you do that 
if it, while it's still wet, you don't have to wet the paper unless this has started, unless what you put on here has already started to dry. And there you go. So I will write over that with my fountain pen and I'll probably write over this and I'll talk about what we did. Because as you can see, based on, I mean, I can see the difference. I can see the difference in the pigments and how vivid this is so much lighter the Crayola but you could go over it again you could make it darker you could make it darker so yeah thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed this I am trying to give you more ideas about things to use on a budget like I said, you could do the Tombos and you could use them for watercolor or if you, like I said, if you spread them down on clear plastic or a plate, you could actually use this. Spread it in, in a palette on a plate. You could do this right here and pick it up with your watercolor brush. That gives you some ideas. Um, I use you can use a as long I find it easier to use clear or white. So if you've got clear acetate paper like your stickers come on, you can use that. That way you don't buy anything. Um, if you've got a plate or a bowl or a dish, this is porcelain. So if you've got a plate or a bowl or a dish that is that glassware that's solid white where you can see, especially one of those little saucers. Um, you could use it as a palette. Um, I find that the glass, the porcelain, or this clear plastic works much better than um, plastic plastic. So, okay, I have written on the pages. So, what I've talked about in this is what this was about. Why these? And if I, if I'd known, if only I'd known some of this back when I first started, what I do. And after thinking about it, I I think depending on where you live, if I if I had to do it all over again, I'd get Tombows and watercolor. If I could get them. Either thing, depending on because you can get brights in the Tombows and get neutrals in the Windsor and Newton. You could get these and get the brights and the neutrals and then get some Tombows that match or or I'd get the Crayola Super Tips the 24 pack or the larger one because um, you can do lettering with these and I'd get watercolor or you could get these and the markers and the Windsor Newton any one of these would work any one of these would work depending on what your budget is the, the Tombos come in a very large pack or they come in different packs and these are watercolor based and so are the super tips and so are these as well as the zigs. I love my zigs. I like, I like marker pens. I like being able to do watercolor with marker pens. I'm not very good at brush lettering so me telling you about brush lettering is pointless because I don't know very much about it. I'm not very good <laughs> and do faux lettering, um, faux calligraphy. So I'm not the person to talk to anybody about that. But if I had to, I'd say any one of these. I have not tried the Primas, but I hear they're really good. I'd also like to try Jane Davenport's new watercolor thing. Um, these are tried and true, the Windsor and Newton Common. You can get the bigger one with more colors in it and add that to any one of the marker pens. These are not budget budget friendly though whereas these the Crayola super tips are very budget friendly and these say are actually budget friendly um, they are quite budget friendly I found them on Amazon I think they also have them on eBay jet pens has some of this stuff so if I had to do it all over again and that's what I wrote um, I'd also like to try Jane Davenport's mermaid markers. I've not tried them yet. 
as well as the Primas, like I said, what this is about is your budget, finding things that you can use and that work, and then finding things. Um, the, the Derwent Ink Tense pencils are a really good alternative to adding color, bright, bold color to things um, that you're doing when, you know, if you're talking about watercolors or pencils, we'll get into pencils more later. But if I had to do it all over again, and I didn't, because when I started, they didn't have these. These weren't available. So if I had, um, I, yeah, they, they weren't available. And these, um, I'm still using these. I got these, I don't know, about six months to a year in when I started doing this stuff with the Fobonichi. I got these about six months to a year in, about six or eight months in. Crayola Super Tips. These work work really well on a budget. You can start collecting the Tombos. I need a new yellow one. There are a lot of alternatives. So, like I said, there's all kinds of things. You just have to find what works for you um, and your budget and what you enjoy. And um, somebody asked about MacGyvering my platinum carbon dusk pen and what I did was cut the end see it's crooked I cut the end off I measured where I, I measured it to put this at the edge of here with it out of the pen because this was really long and I put this right here and I took a white uh, or I think I was a white Sharpie. I have some that will write on plastic on anything. I took one of those marker pens that's permanent that will write on anything and marked it. And I gave myself a little excess, a little extra room because I knew that I was doing it and it might get clumsy. And I did, as you can tell, I kind of cracked it. You can see the, the, the depth right there. And I cut it. And then I took some sandpaper and sanded this portion and I found one of these little rubber stoppers and I put it over it that fits and then that way when I take the this off it fits on there and it keeps it on there and then this keeps anything from getting in the little that part because it's a, an open hole without that little rubber stopper on there and that's it y'all that is it and um, that's how I MacGyvered it Romney talked about it I think she even um, she might have even showed how it was done <laughs> it took me six months to get up the courage to do it because I was scared I'd mess it up so that's it doll that's all I did to MacGyver that I like the shorter paint brushes which is why lately you've seen me um, this is the Escoda Versatil now these are the inexpensive version of the Escoda. These are synthetic. These are not the Sable or whatever the more expensive one. These are the inexpensive one. I have an 8 and I have a 4. I would like to get the 6 and the 10 um, and maybe even the 2. Um, I like the synthetic um, but to be honest I have this which came from Amazon and it is really good it's just a generic one and it's really good so I have these um, this is my four in the Escoda line so I like the travel brushes um, my husband thinks these look really weird he thinks they look like big bullets <laughs> like bullets um, but yeah so I have an eight, and a four, and I want to say there might be even be a two.
it'd probably be about a two or a one. So when I go, um, I have the four in both of, so I could actually leave this one. So the four, I have two four and eight, two fours and two eights in the travel. So these stay usually, these stay in my travel bag. Well, in the travel roll right here. And then I have a water brush that stays in here. And this is my Twisby Echo, and it has um, Lexington Gray in it. And it usually stays right here because I could actually switch them out because this, the Pilot Pereira, this is a fine, and it has the Noodler's Gray in it. But I've been trying to use this one more so I can get the nib to like me <laughs> because these, the, the, the Twisby Echoes like me just fine. What, the only thing I do differently is when this one stays with me right here at the desk, the 12, is that if I'm going to go out, um, is I'll take the 12 and now this new brush that is a 2 and it's a flat that I got from Art Snacks, I'll, these right here go in this roll and I have a one of those little straw things to go over this somewhere. It's probably in that jar. So I'll do this. And then I'll take the um, other, this is black and it's an extra, it's a fine. So, or an extra fine. And I'll put some of the colored pencils, the pink and the white, and a pencil and eraser if they'll fit. Um, but, and then this is my actual travel roll for when I go urban sketching. And while we're talking about budget supplies, this was handmade. I've showed this before, but I have switched things around. So these two are now my go-to's. So this a lot of times sits at my desk as it was over there. And this is my, my regular pen case. So this is the one that I use on a regular basis sitting at the desk. Um, and I'll put pins in there. The pins that go in that roll often go in here. This has got the extra cartridge. This is the one where I can journal on washi tape or pictures or whatever with and it's permanent. My um, microns and my Faber Castells, that liquid chrome pen that came from Art Snacks. Some of these, my Faber Castells, um, are all most of those. The, pe the pens I actually journal with on a regular basis go in here because they're easily accessible. And it goes in my pouch. And I will show y'all my pouch another day. And what I've done is this sits on my craft table or on my desk. And these have the pens I use most, including my fountain pens. And the pencils. So this fountain pen and this fountain pen often go, they actually go in here. And this pen should be in here. Actually, this pen should be in here. And this pen should be there. So, this is the Pilot Multiball. And this is the acrylic white marker pen that I got from Art Snacks. So. This is my writing pen. Um, this is the Twisby Mini with the turquoise ink. I write with it. It actually stays in a loop. Um, in a pen loop. But
So as you can see, favorite pens, pencils, my mechanical eraser, Sharpie pens, I was wondering where those at, they were in here. Um, the Uniball, the Jelly Roll, have a hybrid somewhere um, that's white ink. My graphite pencils, my fountain pens. This um, drawing pen could actually go in there, but usually one of these. I need to get this pen out and see if it's working now because I had to clean it. And I have a. Um, this is my Noodler's Flex. This is my Platinum Cool. I need to get it out and use it. Um, my Pilot Metropolitan. So as you can see, these are probably two of my favorite budget pens. This is the Platinum Plazar and the Pilot Metropolitan. These are both really good budget pens and they work really well. Um, I still use cartridges in this one and I'm pretty sure I, I need a cartridge in that. I need to fill that cartridge up. So that makes keep that one out this has this weird converter balloon -y feeling thing that you squish not a fan not a fan I need to get a regular converter for this so these would be my actual pen rolls this one was handmade and I ordered it um, a girl that was in one of the Facebook groups I think it was one of the bullet journaling groups her grandmother made her wine and everybody was like well they wanted wine and I picked the coffee material and this one I ordered from Jet Pens this has the little leather strap and this has the cloth strap and these fit really well this fits well in my Delphonics pouch and this I just put in my book bag and this will fit in my Delphonics pouch so and this is the bag that um, all of the marker except the Tombows go in I have the Tombows in a bucket and Right now I have all the reds and pinks and purples and the ones I'm using in my bullet journal and in my journal right here, the makeup bag, but as you can see, it's it's actually had markers and pens and stuff in it, so that's it, y'all. I use a lot of makeup bags to house things with. I got this out. It's Valentine's Day and then I'll be able to use it. I can use it in March um, because we have flowers and stuff. I use it all throughout the summer and then I have um, another one that's more like wintery feeling um, but I really like the way that this one looks. Yeah. That's it y'all. Thanks for watching. Bye.